Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another Victory Group. We're so glad that you're with us. If you're a visitor, we welcome you. Whoever invited you did you a favor. And if you don't know who we are, I'm Pastor John. And who are you? I'm Pastor Aisha. We pastor the best church on the planet. Yes, we church do. Victory in Christ Christian Center. So we welcome you. To all of our partners, we throw you a kiss. Mwah. Mwah. We love you. So glad that you're with us. And so let's dive in. We've been in Amen. a great, great series entitled Experiencing the Benefits of Righteousness. Amen. Getting understanding about the righteousness of God. And so we've given a work and definition of righteousness. And what is that? What's our definition? We said that righteousness is nothing more than being able to stand before God without guilt or shame, including whether it be condemnation or anything yeah, else. Guilt, shame, condemnation, fear of judgment. Mm. You know, and, and, and we're getting that and it's because of what Jesus did for us. Yes. And so we said that in order to really understand righteousness and, and the benefit of it, we needed to really go back before we could go forward to understand God's original plan for man. Yes. That if we could go to the beginning, we could see God's original plan for man as well as God's intended state of relationship for man and himself. Amen. And so um, we looked at Colossians and Colossians chapter one, verse 16 talks about that um, all things were made by God. Mm -hmm. All things came from him, both the invisible and the, and the, the visible. visible. And so things that, that are seen and things that are not, not seen. seen. And so that gives us insight that before there was anything, there was God. Mm -hmm. It was just him by himself. Yes. And then God started at the beginning and he created it and initiated the beginning and he mm -hmm. creates this invisible realm. And so that invisible realm that had angels and beings and all those wonderful things in it, that invisible realm being created by default made God a king. Yes. Because a king is one who rules over. And so when there was nothing to rule, he was God. He wasn't a king, mm -hmm. but he was God. But when he made the invisible realm, he now is a king by default because he has something to rule over this invisible mm -hmm. realm. And so that realm that he rules was his domain. And thus we get kingdom because a king and his domain, that's the kingdom. And it's where God is and was, and so it's the kingdom of God. Amen. And so we then saw, and, and Bible tells us that God took the visible out of the invisible. Mm -hmm. He creates the visible realm out of the invisible. What you can see comes from what you can't, can't see. see. And he creates this man mm -hmm. out of himself. He takes his spirit, mm -hmm. which, you know, another word for spirit is hue, mm -hmm. and he puts the spirit, the Bible says in Genesis 1, into dirt. Mm -hmm. Another word for dirt is man. Man mm -hmm. means dirt. And so he puts the spirit in dirt. So now you have a spirit being in dirt. You have hue in man. And, and mm -hmm. so we get human. And he creates this human and he breathes into him the breath of life, the Bible says. And man becomes a living soul. Nefesh, it says, another speaking spirit like God. And he tells that man, you will walk in dominion, authority, power. Mm -hmm in the earth. You will govern on the earth as I govern in heaven. Amen. Because God's will was he wanted to rule the seen from the unseen mm -hmm. through the seen man. And so that man was given dominion and authority and power, influence, governmental authority over the earth on God's behalf. Amen. God now releases the Holy Spirit, we found out, because the Holy Spirit would be the go-between, mm -hmm. the connection between God in heaven and man on earth. The Holy Spirit will allow God to download mm -hmm. what was in his mind, which is his will, into the man's will and the man's mind. So the Spirit of God that was dwelling in man was the connection between man and God. Well, as man fell in sin, we found out that all of a sudden now, man falls in sin, takes all the authority, dominion, and transfers it over to a different world order where Satan was the rule of that world order. Mm -hmm. And because Satan or the spirit of God cannot dwell in sin, the spirit of God had to disconnect from man, mm -hmm. had to come out from inside of him and go back to God. And now that man that was created to rule in governmental authority and mm -hmm. power and leadership on the earth on behalf of God is now locked out of fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. He no longer can communicate with God. Mm -hmm. And he's now also under the influence of a different spirit, which is Lucifer mm -hmm. now. And so God has this dilemma now, this man that he designed to rule the earth on his behalf. He now has broken fellowship with that man. And now God is no longer in control of what's happening on the earth. Mm -hmm. And so he makes a statement to Satan 
when he's, he's now judging Adam and Eve, and he says to Satan, he says, you think you got over now, mm -hmm. but I have a plan. Amen. And God's plan was to send his only begotten son. <laughs> God so loved the world oh. that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever oh. would believe in him wouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. And so John 1 tells us literally, literally what happened. In the beginning was the, the word, word, and the word was with God, God. and the word was, was God. God. Verse 14 of John 1 says, and the word became, became flesh and dwelt among us. And so Jesus shows up on the planet now mm -hmm. to redeem man. He shows up and because Jesus was without sin. Amen. He's born to a virgin mother. And that's a reinforcement that the baby, when a woman's pregnant, the baby's blood never mixes with the, with the mother's blood. Mm -hmm. It's always the blood of the father. And because all of humanity was tainted by the fall of Adam, Jesus' blood needed to be clean if he was going to be the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. Jesus is now born without sin. And he's the only human being on the planet at that time without sin. And because the Spirit of God can dwell where there is no sin, the Spirit of God is with him. Yes. And Jesus makes this statement, his first public statement to everybody as he's starting his ministry in Matthew 4, he says this, he says, repent, which is the word metanoah, which means change, change your thinking, thinking, for the kingdom, kingdom of heaven, heaven is at hand. hand. That's what man was intended to be in the beginning, Amen. kingdom of heaven. It's another translation, it's basilia. It means God's rule in Amen. man on, on earth. earth. And when man fell in sin, now God's rule had to back up off of man. Amen. So Jesus was saying, I have an announcement. The rulership of God is back in man via the spirit of God on the earth. And he's telling man, now you gotta change your thinking because this is what has come back Amen. into the earth. So Jesus there is giving us now his assignment and that's what we really have gotten into lately, his assignment on the earth. Yes. And it's threefold. Number one, he was there to reintroduce the kingdom of God mm -hmm. to the ruler of the earth, which was man. Yes. And so he has to come and go, listen, there's a, there's a kingdom back on the earth that once was, not a new kingdom, a kingdom that once was, that was lost, that I'm bringing back because yeah. I'm gonna lay my life down for you and my blood is pure and my blood is going to redeem you back into your rightful place as righteousness. So Amen. one, that's his, it was his assignment. Number two, it was also to restore the, the rightful ruler, ruler back to their rightful place so that they could once again be the kingdom mm -hmm. of God in the earth. And then thirdly, and we're getting into all of these, so we, we won't expound much now. Thirdly, it was to retrain the rightful ruler to think like, like he used to think, which was based upon God. Amen. A lot of good stuff. Yes. We're running out of time. A lot of great stuff in this. We're really into Jesus' assignment right now. And so you don't want to miss it. You want to get it really, really good. The biggest thing out of this is praise God mm. that Jesus coming and paying the ultimate price, laying his life down, shedding his pure, untainted blood, Amen. restores us back to a place of right standing in God. We are made holy once again, and yes. therefore we're back in right standing with God. Amen. Awesome, awesome stuff. <laughs> All right, well, before we go, we always give you some questions. So we're gonna give you some questions today, um, you know, for you to answer and uh, really, really important. And so uh, what's our questions for today? And uh, we'll kind of expound on them. Okay, the first question out of what we've got is how has the teaching on righteousness affected um, you and how you see yourself and what areas in your life do you need to change? Yeah, that's very, very good. This whole teaching on righteousness really causes you to think differently. Amen. So, excellent. Number two. Number two, why do believers need to be able to speak in our heavenly prayer language and what is the benefit? And we dealt with that in, I think, one of the past messages about the, you know, the Spirit of God. When you get born again, you have a right to pray in your heavenly prayer language, an unknown tongue that you have a right to. And so say the question again, say it again. Why do we believers need to be able to experience and speak in our heavenly prayer language and what is the benefit? So you had to be in the service to really get that. If you weren't in service, if you weren't in service, then look for the others that were in service um, a few weeks ago to, to give you inside information of why as a born again believer, you, you have a right to pray in the spirit and you should be praying in the spirit. And actually we got four questions because I missed one. What are what areas are you ruling and reigning in, and what must you do to change so you can start ru ruling and reigning in those All right, areas? All right, so we're called to rule and reign on this planet, representing God, and so that's a great, yes. great question. All right, and then what's the and last? And then last one? but not least, and this is a bonus question in. 
um, this past Sunday services or depending upon when you're seeing this message, we pray for those who wanted to receive the gift of praying in their heavenly prayer language. And if you were one who received that gift, how has it changed your prayer life? Awesome. So if you receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit or maybe a refreshing, sometimes people, yes. they, they pray in the Holy Spirit, but then they stop. They stop and they, they haven't stop. done it for and a while. And I think a big problem is sometimes when you first experience praying in your heavenly prayer yes. language, you don't practice and pray mm -hmm. in the spirit till it's second nature. Yes. So when you fall in sin, then the enemy comes for your prayer language. Yeah. He comes for your prayer language. So, you know, so that's a very, very awesome, you know, how, how has it changed you? Praying in the spirit, how has it changed Amen. you? Amen. How has it changed you? What's happened so far? And if you ha if you prayed in the spirit la last week or two weeks ago, but you haven't done it since, you got to practice. Amen. You got to practice to it's second nature. All right, we're out of time. We got to go. Great time with you. We love teaching this stuff. This will really change your life. And so have a great time in group today <laughs> as you transition out of the video and answering the questions into the passion part. You know, if there's somebody new, introduce yourself. Make fellowship. This is how we're going to stay smaller as we get larger. Amen. All right, we got to go. And we always end this way. Pastor Aisha, she finishes it. We declare there's only victory. One place in the universe. Where is that, mama? That's in Christ Jesus. Be blessed.